What's up guys, who care? It's been quite a while since I've done a video that's actually a, vi a voice video, but here we are. Um, we are doing another of the Loop Laptop series. Uh, so today's example is this nice Dell Inspiron 1100. So this is the kind of laptop you would probably have had at the lower end of things in 2002-2003. So you've got Windows XP as you would expect, but to show that it is the lower end, it's running a Intel Celeron 2.4 GHz, but it's actually a desktop Celeron, it's a Northwood, so it's pretty power hungry. So at the moment we're using a steady 20 watts of power just sat here idle on the battery. Um, under load I've seen it pull 70 watts out of the charger, um, which considering it was it's got integrated graphics and such is pretty beefy. So um, it was definitely not a lightweight laptop for the road. It was something that you would be using probably permanently on a desk most of the time. Um, the fan always runs because of the Celeron processor. It's got to keep it cool. It does a good job of it. I mean, at the moment, it's been running for a few minutes and it's sat at 35 degrees, which is excellent. Um, on the load it goes up to about 65 which is again pretty good but that's because it's running it's very very aggressive with its power management so it doesn't want you to overheat at any point and it does a good job of making sure that you don't so on the side we have a standard Dell DVD CDRW drive which it doesn't really want to focus on for some reason um, you Standard single PCMCIA slot, headphone and microphone. Then you've got battery goes in the side here. And you've got an Ethernet jack and the fan grill. And then underneath again you can see the fan vent, but it seems to be okay even on the bed. I mean it doesn't seem to matter too much. Then you've got the rear fan vent vent. You've got your power jack. Now this is probably one of the last to use this power jack, which still doesn't want to focus that close up. It's the old rounded off rectangle power jack used on the Pentium 3s. Um, soon after this they went to a more standard barrel jack. You've got S-Video out, another fan vent, two USB 2.0 ports, VGA and Ethernet. On the side was actually a modem. This particular example is in extremely good shape. There's no real blemishes or imperfections in the screen. Um, I'm not sure how well the refresh rate is syncing with my camera, but I'll have to check that when the actual footage is in. The actual laptop itself has needed very little work. I had to fit a hard drive because it came without one. Um, I had to replace the CMOS battery and obviously the main battery. Now, the pro one. This is a very, very well built laptop, very well designed, very well thought out, apart from one problem. It has a soldered CMOS battery. So that of course means you've got to strip the entire thing down and then desolder and resolder the battery, which is not ideal, but I did it. Um, it wasn't too bad because like I say the rest of the laptop is fought through very well. Um, so everything came apart very easily, it's in good shape inside, this one has obviously been looked after by whoever previously owned it. But if you look at the keyboard, you'll notice an oddity. That is not where you would normally see the Windows key. You normally see it down here. And also your insert and delete keys are located down here, which again is very odd. So I'm not sure why Dell decided to do this. I've not seen that layout on any of their systems, older or newer. But apparently they did. And it's not like someone's messed around with the keycaps, because I press that key. As you can see, it's clearly the Windows key. So, that's an odd one. So what use would this laptop be today then? Well, it's a bit limited really. Um, we've only integrated graphics to play with. You really are restricted in the games that you can play and because it's Intel GMA graphics 
uh, you're probably restricted to late 90s, very early 2000s stuff, depending on how much video RAM is allocated. Um, so with 512 meg of system RAM, you're not going to be allocating too much because XP, SP3 needs 512 mega RAM or it will throw a fit. You have the very much two tone Dell style of the time, but if you want to just run basic XP software, this would be absolutely fine for that. It's completely dead reliable, um, despite the desktop components, it doesn't get too hot. As long as you don't put the fan vents, then I would imagine it goes completely berserk. Um, it's obviously very power hungry, but the battery is a decent size, so it does still get some battery life out of it. Um, but it's it's a pretty nice little si well big system. It just you've got to bear in mind its limitations, and obviously you now time has moved on, and what was once an impressive piece of kit. Um, no longer is. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this this brief video of the Inspiron 1100, and maybe, just maybe, I'll actually make something again properly in the future. Take care, everyone.